Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Yeah. Uh, I'm going to present uh, this paper, Leveraging Unsupervised and Weekly Supervised Data to Improve Direct Speech-to-Speech -speech Translation. Uh, this work was done when I was in Google Research in together with my co-authors. So let's start from the background on uh, speech-to-speech translation. So conventionally, uh, speech-to-speech translation systems is typically composed of a cascade of multiple systems. For example, to translate the Spanish speech into English speech, uh, there would be an ASR system which recognize the Spanish speech into Spanish uh, transcript. And then an MT system to translate the Spanish text into English text. And finally, a TTS system uh, to synthesize English speech from the English text. And instead of that, the direct speech to speech translation uh, models would take Spanish speech as input and directly generate the translated English speech. So Translatotron is the first of such kind of uh, direct speech to speech translation model. It was, work, it was work done by myself and my co-authors uh, in 2019. So the backbone of this model is a sequence to sequence model with attention. And it is trained in a multi-task setting up in together with predicting uh, phone names for both source site and the target site. And in addition to that, we also demonstrate one key benefit of direct speech to speech translation is that it's able uh, to preserve uh, non linguistic or paralinguistic information during the translation, for example, the voice of the speakers. And on the other side, there is one huge limitation of this approach is that the translation quality from this model is significantly lower compared to a conventional cascade system. So in the following up work uh, last year, uh, we proposed a translation tool, uh, which brings the translation quality uh, from a direct speech to speech translation model to be very close to cascade systems. So translation two is composed of three key components, uh, a speech encoder, a linguistic decoder, and an acoustic synthesizer. And these three components is connected with a single uh, attention model. And the benefit of that kind of architecture uh, is that, first of all, because the, because the alignment led by the attention is between a speech sequence and a phone name sequence, uh, which predicted by the decoder. So the, the alignment is much easier to learn uh, compared to the alignment between a longer speech sequence to a speech sequence. And finally, uh, the single thing here ensures a temporal synchronization between the decoder output and the synthesizer output, uh, which is the key reason uh, for achieving uh, the voice preservation on speaker terms that we done through in this paper. So we have shown that when trained on a same data set, the translation quality between the speech to speech translation and the conventional classical system uh, can be very close. But however, in reality, one of the biggest challenge for the speech to speech translation is that the available data for training such kind of system is very limited and is expensive uh, to collect more. On the other side, uh, for conventional system, we we already accumulated a very large amount of data uh, for training each module in the system. So the solution we propose in this paper uh, is to leverage on those existing unsupervised data uh, plus uh, weekly supervised data uh, for improving the quality of the speech to speech translation. The unsupervised data here, uh, we mean unlabeled speech and unlabeled text. And the weekly supervised data refer to uh, MT data, ASR data, and TTS data. So here's a summary of uh, our approaches. 
So well, first of all, um, we explore the using pre-training on both the speech and the text uh, in either self-supervised manner or semi-supervised manner or supervised manner uh, to for improving the performance of each individual component in the model. And the second approach we tried is multitask learning, uh, specifically a multitask learning on speech-to-speech uh, -speech translation plus MT means uh, test to text translation. And third approach we tried is data augmentation. We're augmenting MT data into speech-to-speech -speech translation data uh, by a multi-speaker and a multilingual TTS system. And finally, uh, in addition to those approaches, uh, we further tried to scale the model to be uh, much bigger which further improved uh, the quality of the model. OK, so here is our experiment setup. All our experiment was done based on the triathlon 2 uh, DRAT, speed to speed translation model. And the data set we are working on is CVSSA, uh, which is a multilingual uh, to English uh, speed to speed translation data set, uh, including high resource, mid resource, and low resource groups. So baseline, uh, the baseline is a modified version of Translation 2. So in the original Translation 2, uh, we used a multi-layer LSTM decoder. And uh, instead of that, in this paper, we replace this uh, LSTM decoder by a transformer decoder, uh, which improves the performance uh, significantly by 1.4 uh, blue score. So this transformer-based decoder one uh, is a baseline uh, in this paper. OK, the first approach we tried is pre-training. So we tried pre-training the encoder uh, on, on a large amount of speech data, as well as in a semi-supervised setting up using both speech and the text and a limited amount of ASR data. So, the center, so this, this approach is based on uh, the MSLAM uh, pre-training model. And uh, we also tried to pre-train the decoder uh, in the sequence-to-sequence -sequence model uh, in, a in a supervised setting up. So we pre-train the sequence-to-sequence model with empty data, and we also even uh, examined uh, you know, both test-to-test -test translation, test-to-phoneme translation, and phoneme test-to-test -test translation. And the reason, the reason to go with phone name is that we, we hypothesize that the phone name sequence is more similar to a speech sequence. The results are shown in the uh, table on the right. As you can see, the preaching of the encoder is very effective. It improves the, uh, the blue score by roughly eight pot, which is huge. And the difference between uh, pre-training on speech only and pre-training uh, jointly on speech plus text and a limited amount of AFR data uh, is insignificant. And on the other side, pre-training the decoder uh, in the thing to six model uh, didn't show any benefit. So the second approach we tried is multitask learning. So we did this, this group of uh, experiment on top of the uh, encoder pre-training. And because we are, we are running uh, the multi-model uh, multitask learning, so we utilize uh, the MSLAM encoder pre-trained in uh, on speech plus test jointly, uh, so that it, it can handle both speech and test input on the encoder side. It's important to notice the data set uh, size difference between the speech-to-speech -speech translation uh, task and the MT task. So the MT data set is more than 250 times larger than the speech-to-speech -speech translation uh, data set. So that's the that's reality. And where the potential lies regarding uh, weekly suppressed data. And because there, there are 21 languages involved, and many of them is, uh, are low resource, so we, we, we tried to up sampling the low resource languages uh, with, a, with a temperature during the training. 
And we do see a difference uh, on the result. The result is shown in the table uh, on the lower left. And you can see uh, when we utilize the multitask fine tuning, uh, including empty data, we get a better result uh, compared to not using it. And when we upsample the low resource languages, uh, we get slightly better result as well, especially for uh, low resource cases. The third approach we tried is to simply augmenting the empty data into a speech-to-speech -speech translation data set by using a multilingual multi-speaker TTS model. So, uh, so this approach uh, involved more work on the data preparation, but the training of the model uh, is more straightforward compared to the multitask learning. And the result is shown on the right. And, and as you can see, uh, this approach got significantly better result compared to the multitask fine tuning, especially when we upsample the low resource uh, memory pairs. And then lastly, uh, we try to scale up the size of the model. So the baseline model uh, has like 26 uh, million parameters on the encoder and 25 million uh, on the decoder. So we, we scale the encoder to 600 million and further to 1.8 billion uh, parameters and decoder to uh, uh, slightly more than 100 million parameters. And the, the results are shown in the table on the right. Uh, and you can see scaling up either encoder or decoder helps, uh, but scaling up the encoder is more effective. And uh, the the last row in the third group in the table shows our better result. And you can see that's much better uh, than the previous state of the art. It's like more than uh, two times. So here are the summary of our results. So we've demonstrated that uh, unsupervised data and weakly supervised data are both effective uh, in improving the quality of direct speech to speech translation. Uh, the <clears throat> the result on the CVSSA uh, data set show that we improve the uh, the translation quality blue score every blue score from twelve to twenty five point six, uh, which is more than doubled. And all the three approaches uh, we examined are effective, uh, including self surprise pre training and uh, semi surprise pre training uh, and and multitask learning and the TTS-based data augmentation. And among the th three approaches of utilizing MT data set, uh, we, the best result come from uh, TTS-based data augmentation, which suggests uh, headroom for improvement uh, in the other approaches. OK, uh, this work is um, primarily an empirical work uh, showing the uh, results from different approaches or utilizing uh, unsupervised and weakly supervised data for improve uh, direct speech to speech translation. And I hope our result can be uh, helpful for, uh, for other folks in the community. And thank you all for listening.